I'm going to try to keep the Ceridime video short. It's been a little bit of time since I created one, probably the longest period of time between videos. But I'm going to try to still keep it pretty short. It's a busy season, and I'll probably post another one within the next month anyway. But um, I figured this one would be an appropriate Ceridime because um, just over a month ago, I created a Testimony Corner Facebook page. Um, that's what it's titled. I'm going to link it in the description, but I'm not just here to promote a page I created. It's only got 25 or so likes, and I only have maybe one person who shared other than me. Um, but I figured I could explain to you what a testimony is, because it's kind of a Christianese word, and it's something that can apply to even people who aren't really Christian or maybe don't believe in God, whether you believe um, in a story that God has created for you or not, you have a testimony. It's probably still happening. Um, but let me explain what a testimony is, and then I'm going to share mine briefly, and then um, I'll remind you about this Facebook page I created and how it can be a good tool. First of all, I'm going to just say that my testimony corner page does kind of explain what a testimony is, but um, in simple terms, it's, it's just your story. It's not necessarily just how you came to Christ, because some of you watching this may not have yet, um, but what God is doing, maybe after you've been saved, people have testimonies all the time. That's, that, it's just a word that people use, and there might be some Greek origin or something. I haven't done any research on like what the word originally meant or anything like that, but essentially it's just a testament to what God is doing. And um, I figured I would share mine. I've shared it in different capacities. I think I wrote a blog about it once, and I've sh shared with a lot of people in person. So some of you, this may not be new, but I want to share it because testimonies can be very powerful. And I want to say you don't have to have done drugs and been miraculously healed, and the next day you were sober. and You don't have to have this elaborate, amazing thing to call it a testimony. It can be something as simple as, you know what? I thought I'd be living paycheck to paycheck and I, I might even not have enough money to get through the month, but somehow I'm still able to eat every day. That is a testimony, and that's probably a very common one. Um, now, let me say this. With my testimony, it started probably before I realized it did, but for me it really started the summer after seventh grade. I went to a church camp. It's not with the church I'm associated with now, and I, I won't say which church it was associated with, but um, I was at this church camp, and despite the situation that I'm going to share, it was still one of my favorite camps because it was themed like trendy 80s. And I, I, I have a thing for the 80s sometimes, just the big hair and the bright makeup and the ripped clothes and the baggy clothes and leg warmers with heels. Like, I just love some of that stuff, and it just was always a lot of fun. Plus, there were cute boys there. But that's with every camp. Um, but this one was special. It, it really was one of my favorites, even though I'm going to share um, what happened there. But So I was at this camp, and my best friend and I decided, let's go to the game room and stay up all night. We're not even going to sleep. There's a lot of cute boys in there. They're playing foosball, so let's just hang out in there and hang out. We don't even have to play anything. We did play a little bit of foosball, and we got a little bit tired eventually, and it was probably at least three or four in the morning by the time we were really starting to feel it. And um, I know that she actually fell asleep. I, I remember her being asleep on the couch, and I, I decided I would take a nap on the other couch or the sofa or whatever. Um, and I know I fell asleep, and then at some point, probably really early in the morning, maybe before the sun was up, I, I woke up, and I saw someone in front of me sitting and this person who was in front of me was someone who during this camp um week or whatever it was he he was definitely flirting and I was a seventh grader but I knew what flirting was you learn that very early I mean I started flirting probably in fourth grade or earlier um but so this guy was definitely flirting and he would say things to a bunch of people but he was kind of looking at me when he said it like hey I'm going downstairs to watch tv or I don't remember what he said but I, I just kind of got a weird vibe from him, and he was someone who played, I think, bass on the the worship team for the camp. So it was just a weird situation to have someone superior to me in, in age, you know, act this way. Um, but but he was nice because I, 
I hurt my foot walking barefoot all week on the rough floors. They got kind of calloused and even started to bleed a little. And he ended up putting a bandaid on it and really helping me with, with that minor injury. Um, so it wasn't like the worst situation ever. And I was still pretty young to, to know much else. But when I fell asleep and woke up, he was the one who was sitting in front of me. And as I was waking up, he said something like, do you want to go to the restroom? And I think he had to say it a second or third time for me to really register what what he was asking. Because it was a strange question. First of all, he's a male and he's older and why would he be asking me this? But I got up and I went into the bathroom with him probably thinking he's going to check on my foot or something. Or maybe I was just like, well, I'll just play it cool because what else could it be kind of thing. I, I don't know what I was thinking. It felt like. I wasn't really walking and it felt very strange, but um, when we were in the restroom, he locked the door and then I was like, oh, this isn't what I thought it was. I don't even know what I thought it was. And before I knew it, he was kissing me with his tongue and touching me in every place you can think. Um, I remember what I was wearing. I was wearing these red shorts and this like, it was sort of transparent like shirt that kind of cut off at the shoulders and it was probably fairly form fitting. I, I'm I consider myself a modest person. Even then, it really didn't show much, but it was like my PJs for the week. And I probably was thinking, it's the shorts. He he got the wrong impression. Maybe I smiled too much when he said, you want to go downstairs to everyone. Maybe he thought that I wanted this, but I didn't. And he was, you know, honestly, it was like probably five minutes, but it was the worst five minutes at that point. I'd ever experienced because it was it was very surreal and scary and I didn't know how far it would go and I, I didn't think I could stop it um I didn't know if I would get hurt or make the situation worse if I tried and thankfully I didn't have to do too much to stop it from going further because it had clearly been sunrise by then because there were boys and girls coming into the game room to play games early in the morning and he heard someone passing by the door and he said Something like, you need to leave so I don't get caught, basically. Um, and some of you might be on the side of, wow, that's such a scary situation. I can't believe you've been through that. And others are like, well, I've, I've been raped. I've been through that. I know what that's like. Or or maybe you're in a situation where you just ha haven't experienced either and you're maybe more neutral about it. But either way, that's that's not the end of my, my story. I did leave and I went to my cabin restroom ironically and I, I just cried and it was like the last day of camp we were packing up and I even saw him later in the day talking with other girls I'm thinking I hope he didn't do that to anyone else I hope that he's not going to do it to them and I, I I don't remember talking at all the whole ride home and even then I was a talker I am a talker so for me not to talk for probably two hours on the bus ride home and probably a while before and after I just Nobody knew what happened, except for him. And I think he knew that this wasn't just some um, innocent thing. I was a young person, and he was on the team. And even if he was younger than I thought he was at the time, I thought he was at least in late high school, if not college. I, I don't really remember what his age was. Even if he was my age, he didn't ask me, and he definitely wasn't my age. Um, so... Being molested was at a church camp. That that was like something. I love church. I, I grew up in church from the time I can remember. And I always loved it. I didn't have to get dragged to church. I loved going to church camps. In fact, many people helped us go to these camps because they costed money we didn't have. And something like this happened at one of my favorite camps. It had been so fun all week. And he was not one of the boys I thought was cute. Anyway, so there was just so many things wrong with this, and I kind of liked someone else back home who ended up being my boyfriend for a while, but he was probably the first person I told, and then I told the youth pastor eventually. I told my parents. I told quite a few people after maybe a month of this happening, and after feeling so broken from this situation, so empty, especially because it was associated with a church I love, I was in the living room one day listening to Caleb, and Jeremy Riddles, Jeremy Riddles, Sweetly Broken came on, and I, I just felt so emotional, and it, it says, at the cross, you beckoned me, and I'm drawing a blank on the rest of the lyrics, and I apologize, but I will, I will post, like, the main chorus, at least, of this song, maybe link 
the video for it so you can hear it because that's the song I listened to. I, I was a churchgoer up until that point, but this was the song associated with this terrible situation that made me become an actual follower of God. That's how I chose to chose to make God my Lord because at that point I needed something more than just going to church and liking it. At this point, someone took advantage of me and I needed to know how to move forward and to forgive this person, which in my heart I did. I never saw him again. Um, and I hope that he never did that to anyone else. I'm actually thankful it happened to me because it it turned out to be what saved me spiritually. It turned out to be nothing more than just being molested. I don't want to minimize it, but it could have been worse. It always could have been worse. If, if it happens to someone else, maybe, maybe it would have happened to someone else and they would have started doing drugs or sleeping around because that happens and it, that didn't happen for me. So I'm thankful it happened to me. I wouldn't have wanted to happen and I, I wouldn't wish it on anyone, but it's what was the beginning. It was that low point. I heard a song today that was talking about, um, oh, it was the Gaither vocal band. Sometimes it takes a mountain to make me believe it. Sometimes it takes a mountain to help me see what God has done for me. I'm kind of changing the lyrics a little bit, but that's what I woke up to actually that song this morning. So this is kind of an appropriate topic, but anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, I wrote down my prayer to God, essentially saying I'm broken and I need you. It was like a page long at least. And I have it somewhere, I think still, but um, I invite you to share your testimony. You don't have to share anything if it's that personal or that sensitive like I have. Just share something, maybe a praise that God is doing. Or um, maybe you can be real and vulnerable and share something just as traumatic or however you received Christ. Nothing is too small or too boring. Um, I'm going to link my testimony corner page. That's a perfect outlet for it. Um, again, there's only maybe 25 likes, so like the page, share it, um, send it to people who would like to hear testimonies. Testimonies are powerful. Sometimes they're more powerful than just being read scripture. This could be something that really brings people closer to God, hearing people of the church being very open about difficult things. I'd love to hear your testimony. And like I said, I'll link the, the page, I'll link the video, I'll share some lyrics, and I think that's it. Um, I hope that you enjoyed hearing um, a big part of my life, and I hope to hear your testimony very shortly on my page, and I'll see you there.